At the start of the movie, the protagonist Kim is trying on a wedding dress. After seven years together, she and her fiance Kwan have decided to get married next month. After finally deciding on the dress, Kim gets ready for work. When she enters the elevator, a man named Dao, carrying a box of belongings, hurriedly jumps in. Both of them are attracted to each other at first sight. Kim is curious about what the man has inside the box, so she keeps staring at his belongings. Dao says that they are some pamphlets relating to Africa and that he is leaving for the country tomorrow. As the pair ride the elevator, a palpable tension rises between them. Dao abruptly says that if no one enters the elevator before they reach the first floor, he will take Kim out for a drink tonight. Kim wonders why he thinks she will go out with a stranger like him and asks him if he's hitting on her. In response, Dao says it's obvious they are kind of attracted to each other. Kim then steps out of the elevator, smiling. Next, she hops in a taxi and goes to her destination. In the meantime, Dao also drives to work. He is a general contractor who plans on relocating to Africa in order to expand his business. As he arrives at the construction site and talks with one of the other employees, he notices a familiar face in the distance. Lucky for him, it's Kim who appears to be lost. Dao approaches her and helps her find her destination by accompanying Kim to what turns out to be a jewelry shop. Kim is a jewelry designer who sells her designs to independent, exclusive stores. After her business is complete, Kim calls her fiance Kwan and asks him if he is free to meet her. Unfortunately, he says that he's still busy at work and can't meet her. Disappointed, Kim goes to a nearby library instead. When checking out the books, Dao unexpectedly appears in front of her. Startled, she gets a paper cut from the book. Dao hurries outside and gets a band-aid for her. The two then start roaming around the library, chatting and getting to know each other. Kim asks why he asked her out, to which he replies that she looked bored and just wanted to have some fun. When he asks what her name is, Kim evasively says, girl. When she asks what his name is, Dao responds with boy. This makes Kim laugh, and she says that she is free till 6 p.m. in the evening. The pair then stroll down the street to a video store. They talk about movies, their interest, and their love for vintage things. Kim wants to see a horror movie, so they go inside a theater. While watching a gruesome murder scene, Dao suddenly clutches her hand. Kim then makes fun of him for being such a scaredy cat. After the show, they visit a museum and Kim asks why he's moving to Africa. Dao hopes to settle there and make his business thrive. He tells her that today is the last day for him in Korea and she might be the last person he ever sees from Korea. The sexual tension between them intensifies as they talk. Dao gently places his arm around her, but this initially makes Kim uncomfortable. But when he turns to her and kisses her gently all over her face, Kim melts and kisses him back. They make out for a while and move to the rest area where they let their inhibitions go. After they collect themselves, Dao excuses himself to get refreshed. Sadly, when he returns, she is nowhere to be seen. In his absence, Kim grabbed a taxi and fled the scene, not wanting to mess up her relationship with her fiance. However, she abruptly changes her mind and returns to Dao. He welcomes her with a warm smile and asks where she went. Kim doesn't say anything, and invites him to brunch. In the next scene, the two are at a restaurant enjoying good food and wine when they wonder what they should do for the rest of the day. Dao casually suggests they have a playful day. The two then go to a nearby amusement park and get on a Ferris wheel. They play different games and have a great time. After walking around in heels all day, Kim is tired, so they rest under a tree where Dao massages her legs. Leaving the monotony of their regular lives behind for the moment, the two get caught up in each other. Kim even gets a call from her fiance to remind her about a business meeting they had that afternoon, but she doesn't answer his call. She then asks Dao to drop her off at the business meeting. He agrees to drive her to the location, and while in the car, he asks Kim to pass him a cigarette from a box. While doing so, Kim sees a photo of a girl in the box and asks who she is. Dao refuses to say anything about the photo or the person in it and just insists on the cigarette. When they finally arrive at the business meeting, Dao says that he wishes they had more time to spend together. Before she leaves, he lets her know that he will be waiting for her if she ever changes her mind. Kim tells him to wait for 30 minutes and if she doesn't come back, he should leave. Dao agrees to this and says he'll be waiting on the bench nearby. Next, Kim stands outside the restaurant where she's supposed to meet her fiancé for the business meeting. She sees him inside waiting for her, but for some reason, she doesn't want to go inside. Instead, she runs back to Dao again and tells him that they have until 10 p.m. to be together. For the next couple of hours, Kim and Dao frolic around, hopping from shop to shop, trying on different things. At one point, Kim puts on a loose maxi dress and exchanges her classy coat and skirt at a thrift store. 
The pair then hop inside an arcade and play various games. They have so much fun together that it even disturbs other customers in the parlor. The couple then decides to eat somewhere, but it suddenly starts to rain. As a result, they shelter themselves in an alley and make out there. In the next scene, Dow and Kim are in a hotel room where things get steamy, especially in their romantic rosewater bath. Dang. After this, they go out for dinner. This is where they start sharing their personal life experiences, bringing them even closer. He then asks her what she would do if she met the man of his dreams right before her wedding. Kim pauses for a while and then replies that she would kick him in the ass, then the face, then kick his legs and spit on him. Then she would ignore him. After they finish eating, they say their goodbyes. When they finish eating and are about to say their goodbyes, Dao hugs her tight, telling her to just stay still for a few more minutes. However, Kim reminds him that they made an agreement not to get emotionally attacked. She thanks him for a great time and walks away. But Dao keeps following her, not wanting to part ways. Kim suddenly sees her fiance across the street and gets in the car with him. Quan is mad at her for standing him up earlier, but he is trying to be understanding as he believes she is just experiencing wedding jitters. Meanwhile, Kim notices Dao is still following her. She then abruptly asks Quan if they can call off the wedding. Hearing this, Quan tells her to not get on his nerves. He then swerves the car to avoid traffic. Due to this, Dao, who had been following them on foot, loses chase. Quan later takes her to a restaurant to find some peace. He tells Kim not to worry about their marriage as they have dated for seven years now, so there is nothing to fret about. However, Kim abruptly asks him if he is ever sick of her. Quan replies that every girl becomes monotonous after seven years of dating, so there is no point in asking the question. Suddenly, Dao arrives at the restaurant and takes a seat in front of the two. Kim starts to laugh wickedly and reveals to her fiancé that she spent the whole day with the guy while pointing at Dao. She then gets up from her seat, walks to Dao, and throws water on his face and calls him a moron. They had agreed not to contact each other, but Dao had followed her there. Realizing her betrayal, Quan storms out of the restaurant without saying a word. Dao then walks up to her saying that what she did earlier was way out of line, but Kim reminds him that he too crossed the line. She then asks him to make her happy, as she feels like shit right now. In the next scene, Dao and Kim are seen dancing their hearts out in a nightclub. Kim then gets a phone call from Quan and she picks it up, despite Dao's protest. It turns out he's in the same club as the two of them. Quan says that he's okay with her spending time with Dao if it makes her happy. After all, everybody needs a fling now and then. He's going to let her have fun tonight. After this, she will come back to him and nothing changes between them. Quan then confronts Dao, telling him he is nothing more than a disposable toy to her. This causes tension between Dao and Kim, but our heroine says that she is the one being used. When Dao starts getting aggressive, Kim leaves and runs away from the club. She then sits alone on the same park bench they had rested on earlier. Dao arrives a few minutes later and apologizes to her. They quickly reconcile and sit by the bench to watch the moonlight. Dao then pulls a marker out of his bag and draws Kim's hand on the bench. He then tells her that he will come here to touch her hand mark when he misses her. Following this, the pair continues to do silly things such as declaring fake wedding vows in front of a statue in the park. They spend the whole night roaming around the city and enjoying the city lights. Next, the couple arrive at a hotel room and pour themselves some drinks and dance the night away. Morning finally arrives and it's the day Dao is leaving for Africa. Kim showers with him and shaves his beard. While sipping on a glass of wine, Kim starts to tell a story from her elementary school days. She remembers a girl who always had a sharp pencil. Kim and the others used to have a blunt one, so everyone was practically envious of her. One day, that girl offered Kim a sharpened pencil and she was very happy, but the sharpened pointy lead broke easily. Ultimately, she missed the stubby pencils her mom gave her. She then tells Dao that he is like a softened and reliable pencil, and she is going to miss him forever. Before finally parting ways, Dao gets emotional and suggests that they should date and be together. But Kim tells him that if they start going out, they'll start finding faults in each other and regret meeting anyway. She just wants to remember him in this moment. She hugs him one last time and gets into a taxi. Dao stands in the middle of the street helpless and alone. He longs for her to return, but sadly, she is gone for good. A month later, Kim gets married to her fiancé, Quan. The wedding photos are taken in the same park where she made beautiful memories with Dao. The final scene of the movie shows Kim noticing her hand mark which Dao had drawn on the bench. She also notices that he had drawn his hand on the bench with hers. Kim is flooded with sweet memories of Dao that will surely last a lifetime.